In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The reading is from Ezekiel chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel." I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I will seek the saw lost. I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord.
please stand. A reading from John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life and I take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again, received from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is with me. Hallelujah. Great and peace to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And warm greetings and gratitude to all who are gathered here and to all who are listening online. I wish that more of us could have been included in this joyful occasion. But welcome to our guests from many places, to parents, to spouses, to representatives from the Council of Presidents, to, pres to members of the Board of Regents, to our dedicated faculty and staff, and especially to you, our concluding students, to whom God himself will utter his call this evening to serve his church as workers in his vineyard. I know that I speak for the faculty and for your parents, and for the whole church, and I certainly speak for myself when I say that it has been a high, high privilege to have a hand in whatever capacity each of us has had in preparing you for this vocation. The text for the sermon this evening is the gospel reading from John 10 under the theme, One Shepherd. Jesus Christ. Here again, verses 14 through 16. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. One shepherd. Tonight is a night of joy and confidence and anticipation and of eternal significance because God has raised up one shepherd. The ministry into which you are being called is glorious. It is a bright and splendid light in the midst of the earth because of one shepherd. No one is stronger. No one is more tender. There is no safer shoulder for the sheep than on the shoulder of this shepherd, the one shepherd, Jesus Christ. He was at the Father's side, in the Father's bosom, from eternity. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. 
He became man. He took on our flesh so that he might be the one shepherd for the sheep. He took on our flesh so that he might be slaughtered for the sheep. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world so that we might be his dear lambs. Tonight is a night of joy and of confidence and of anticipation and of eternal significance because God has raised up one shepherd. And the time of his humiliation and the time of his shame and suffering is finished. He has done it. The remarkable saving work of the Christ of God is accomplished. Tonight is a night of joy because of Jesus, the one shepherd. And he is calling you to feed his lambs. What a glorious ministry, the ministry of the gospel of Christ. Glorious because of his power and his wealth and his wisdom and his might, and his honor, and his glory, and his blessing. Glorious because of his love. Earlier this week in a chapel sermon, Christian Pieper reminded us that call day is not about us, it's not about you. At its core, it is about the love of Jesus Christ. He is the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. One shepherd, your shepherd, who died for you, who rose for you, who knows you as the eternal Father knows the eternal Son, he knows you. This Jesus who reigns over all things enthroned at God's right hand of power. He loves you He loves us all. He cares for us every day. He hears our prayers. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. He is truly with us in his word. He is truly with us in his body and in his blood. He is with us standing in the midst of his flock, come what may, to the end of the age. His shepherd's voice will one day summon you from your grave, and his love will be your eternal joy. Call day is about the love of Jesus. It is about the one shepherd. Tonight, your names will be read along with the name of a congregation and the name of a place. You will be called to many different flocks, but truly there is one flock and one shepherd, one shepherd for all of us sheep. Our text this evening about the good shepherd and his sheep comes from right in the middle of John's gospel, chapter 10. And it's fascinating to see the way that John really frames his whole gospel with language of sheep and lambs, proclaiming Jesus as both the good shepherd and also as the paschal lamb, the Passover lamb of God. Towards the beginning of the gospel, right in chapter 1, we have the Baptist pointing his finger and twice saying of Jesus, Behold the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And then right away in chapter 2, John has this emphasis that begins on the Passover, the Passover. In chapter 2, we read, Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand. In chapter 6, we read, Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. And a third Passover, what will be the final Passover in John's gospel, is introduced in chapter 11. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand. Chapter 12, right after that, begins six days before the Passover, and chapter 13 begins before the Passover, when Jesus knew that his last hour had come. 
And three more times during John's account of Jesus' trial and crucifixion, he reminds us again and again, this is the time of the Passover. And John is the gospel writer who tells us that the soldiers did not break Jesus' legs so that as the scriptures say, not one of his bones will be broken which is not only a reference to Psalm 34, but also an allusion to the instructions for the Passover lamb. You shall not break any of its bones. All of the thousands and thousands of Passover lambs that had been sacrificed, and now here was the one, the one Passover lamb of God, whose blood would avert God's judgment upon sinners forever. He was the one willing lamb, the one willing shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. He had the authority to lay it down. He gave his life for you. No one took it from him. And he who had the authority to lay his life down also had the authority to take it up again. This Jesus, who has risen from the dead, our triumphant shepherd. The Gospel of John, which began by referring to Jesus as God's Lamb, and which right in the center has Jesus declaring himself our good shepherd, also ends with talk of sheep. In John 21, the final chapter, the risen and triumphant shepherd stands before Peter and charges him, feed my lambs, shepherd my sheep, feed my sheep. Peter isn't the one shepherd, neither is any other disciple, and neither are you. There is one flock, and one shepherd, Jesus Christ. But what a wondrous thing is happening here at the end of John's gospel. As the good shepherd, the victorious lamb, calls Peter to shepherd his lambs, Jesus' lambs, Peter. Peter, who just before Jesus was arrested had boasted, Lord, why can't I follow you? I will lay down my life for you. Peter, to whom Jesus had replied, Will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow before you have denied me three times. And Peter would find himself weak and weeping. There is one flock and one shepherd, only one whose faithfulness never wavered and will never waver. One shepherd who laid down his life for us. One shepherd who will never deny us because he cannot deny himself. One shepherd whose rod and staff in life and in death will prevail for us and will bring us home. Peter is not that shepherd, and neither are you. But... What a wondrous thing is going on here at the end of John's gospel. The one shepherd is calling another to feed his lambs, to shepherd his sheep, to be a pastor. And what the Lord God did for Peter and others at the end of John's gospel, he continues to do for his church. And he does so here tonight. He is making you shepherds, watchmen over his flock. He who gave his life for the sheep here tonight gives you for his sheep. Tonight, here, Jesus Christ is shepherding his flock. He is calling you to go forth with his word and with his sacraments, with his love, with his service, with his humility and meekness, with his strength and authority, with his rod and his staff, and almost certainly also with his wounds and his sufferings. 
I pray that a warm reception greets you at the place where you are being called. I pray that your ministry will be blessed by God, and it will be, and that it will be carried out with joy, and that you would often, often be blessed to see the fruits of your labors. I pray that the flock which you serve would display the unity and the peace of Christ. My own years as a pastor in Iowa were, I think, the richest and happiest years of my life. But whether through the sin and hostility of others or through your own sin and weakness and brokenness, there will also be many times when the glorious ministry of the gospel of Christ does not seem so glorious. And when the strong pastor who he has called to care for his sheep will not feel strong, and when the faithful shepherd he has called will be confronted by his own lack of zeal and unfaithfulness. As with Peter, there will be times when you find yourself weak and weeping. In those times, dear brothers and sisters, the faithfulness of the one shepherd, your shepherd Jesus, will endure. His arms will be strong for you. His shoulder will be your rock and place of refuge. His word and promises will bring life to death-soaked bones. His sacrament will bring ointment and healing to your heart and to your lips. His strength, not yours. His righteousness, not yours. His authority, not yours. His love, not yours, is your hope and the church's hope. He is so good, so true. He will not fail you. You. Will you lay down your life for me? Jesus asks you. Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. But if you turn the question around, and if you ask Jesus, will you lay down your life for me? Ah, yes. Right there is your hope and your joy for a lifetime of self-giving ministry in his name. For he will answer you again and again, yes, for you, dear lamb, I have laid down my life and for all the dear lambs whom I've called you to shepherd in my one flock with one shepherd. In his sermons on the Gospel of John, Martin Luther encouraged future pastors with these words. And it's a couple paragraphs of words. So here we go. I know, says Christ, that the devil will assail you severely for my sake to make you sad and weary and impatient so that you stop your work and say, I wish I had never begun this. That is what is happening to many now, Luther continues, and I myself have often felt this temptation to displeasure and disgust and have actually thought if I had not begun to do this, I would never again want to preach another word but would want to let everything go as it goes. For flesh and blood are real flesh and blood. And everyone is dazed by the fact that he must see and suffer so much contempt, ingratitude, and danger in return for his love and good turns. But, says Christ, no. Do not let the devil, the world, or your own flesh overpower you. But think how I have loved you and still love you and how much I have spent on you that you may be righteous, acceptable to the Father, saved through me, his minister and priest and my disciple. For this I have suffered and overcome everything both the devil and the world were able to do to me. So friend, remain in my love. 
and do not let the many trials and displeasure which they arouse discourage you. Remain in Christ's love. Indeed, labor then, dear friends, with joy in Christ, with freedom in Christ, in the love of Christ for you. Serve with energy and devotion. Bring the good news of the good shepherd to many. Be a good shepherd for Christ's flock. Yet always in this confidence that finally there is one flock, one shepherd, Jesus, the good shepherd who laid down his life for us sheep. To his name be all glory at this seminary, throughout his church, and in your lives of ministry. Amen.
Please be seated. In Christ's name, we welcome you who are present here in the chapel and those who are watching live stream via the internet. This evening is a joyous occasion for us all. And President Egger, thank you for reminding us that the joy comes from the one shepherd and his one flock. Tonight, the Concordia Seminary community joins our candidates, their spouses and children, families and friends, supporting and calling congregations in praising God and celebrating his gift of workers for his church. I also want to thank the staff and offices that have worked so diligently to make this in-person service happen. Alex Ann O'Brien, who's our Director of Campus Services and Events Coordinator, has worked diligently for this to come ha can be. Our Communications Department with Melanie Ave and Sarah Maney have worked hard. My Executive Assistant, Kathy Whitcomb, who does most all things placement in that office. Last year, we could not meet in person because of the COVID-19 lockdown. This year, we are in person, but we are under some rather significant restrictions by St. Louis County in the ter terms of wearing masks, social distancing, limited occupancy in a building, and making contact with other people. Next year, we hope and we pray that we'll be back to a full chapel, no masks, handshaking, hugs, smiling faces. But this year, we want to acknowledge some of the disappointment that is here because not all family and children and friends are able to be here as each candidate was given just one guest to invite. But we thank you for understanding and we hope that you are celebrating as you watch online with all of us here in the chapel this evening. For the assignment at a meeting on Saturday, April 24th, the Council of Presidents acting as the Board of Assignments for the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, after much prayer and deliberation in the months leading up to this vote, approved the placement of students from calls for our synodical seminaries. Our sister seminary, Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, held their placement service last evening. Tonight, we announce calls for 47 students in our residential MDiv program, seven residential alternate route students who are currently on Vicarage, two students from the Center for Hispanic Studies, three from our Cross-Cultural Ministry Center in Irvine, California, two from our Ethnic Immigrant Institute of Theology program. We'll also announce the placement or placement pending of three deaconesses from our residential program and two deaconesses from the Center of Hispanic Studies. It's our privilege to have with us this evening the Council of Presidents and Presidium of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, and I welcome Reverend David Meyer, President of the Michigan District and also Chairman of the Council of Presidents to greet you this evening. Thank you, sir. Dr. Egger, thank you for the opportunity of being here. Glenn, again, for the invitation. David? Take this off. Take there we go. I'm good with that, trust me. <laughs> I'm looking at some future pastors here, and we are so very grateful. I want to thank the professors, the great teachers of the church for what you have done for these men and hope that you're grateful to them. But brothers, you have been prayed for ever since we knew that we had vacancies in our congregations or if we knew you beforehand, you've been prayed for as well. 35 district presidents would normally be over here along with the presidium, but I want you to know that if they could not be here, they're probably watching online and again, they have not stopped to pray for you, for your congregations, and for the larger parishes that will be around your particular congregations. You know what, you've had great teachers, and you're gonna come into a world, though, that is 
completely different from what many of us have known in the past. You've got one good year of experience under your belt, and that's when COVID was first erupting, right? Now you're going to go back out into the field, and we're wondering when are the masses going to return? When are the exiles going to return again? And uh, you're going to wonder, uh, how do we get past some of the big questions? Masks, right? No masks, loving it. What about other things, other big questions that we're facing, like the Equality Act? How is that going to affect our churches and our schools? And we begin to wonder. Now, Peter had a great teacher also. We, we heard about Peter. And we recognize, you know what, it was for three years that he was with Jesus, and yet he's thrown out there, and we realize that he faced some big, big changes. The Lord never left them, as you heard. You know, when uh, he was on Joppa's roof, the big sheet comes down. It has all of these animals on it, and the command is given, you know, kill and eat. And Peter is, is quick to respond, Lord, you know, these are dirty animals. I would never eat this. Reminds the Lord of his commands in the Old Testament. And yet we see this Peter, as he continues to argue with the Lord, lose the argument that's always a good thing. And then we realize also as he gets into that whole episode of what is taking place, that the Lord reminds him, do not call anything unclean that I've made clean. You know, the Old Testament applied some of those same principles of separation uh, to people as well. It's one thing to do that with animals, but then the people. We see that even in the formation of the, of the temple. You have the women's court, and then you have the layman's court. Um, or the, you have the Gentile court, the women's court, and then the layman's court, and then the priest, and inevitably the, the holy of holies. But there was separation. I am so thankful that we live in the New Testament when we recognize and see the one good shepherd, as we have just heard about this evening, the one blessed Savior that looks out at the world and recognizes that all of us have fallen short, all of us are different. You know, there is uh, one book that really kind of, I think, just highlighted the entire fact of looking at the Old Testament and saying, when you look at all these laws that just separated, what's the one overarching theme we can take from that? What, what, what classified these animals as unclean or an anomaly or abnormal? Um, it's the fact that they were all different, oddballs. The anomaly may have been that if you were in the sea, you shouldn't have been an eel because you should have had fins. You should have had scales, and therefore the eel is out. The Old Testament law was no oddballs allowed. Jesus fulfilled all of the Old Testament, all of the law. And if we could say there's one overarching principle now, we're all oddballs. But God loves us anyway. And that's the message of the gospel that you get to carry into your churches, into your communities, into your parishes. Jesus culminated his time on earth by giving his disciples the great commission. And once considered dirty and to be separated, the goyim, he says, no, go to the unclean Gentiles in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And Jesus' approach to unclean people, although it dismayed many, especially with those within the church, it also became the reason that he finally died. No oddballs allowed was replaced again by we're all oddballs, a rule of grace, but God loves us anyway. You know, when you look at the Old Testament laws, there were three things that happened quickly in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 8. And if you take them together, you begin to see Christ's heart for ministry and his intent. There was the, the healing of the naked madman, who Jesus commissioned really as the first missionary to go back into his hometown. Then you have the hemorrhaging woman, hemorrhaging for 12 years, kept her unclean, could not worship, could not gather. She did not stain him. She left whole. And then, of course, after you've already been with a crazy man, a Gentile, and now a hemorrhaging woman, why not touch a corpse? And he heals Jairus' daughter. Brothers, as we look at what Christ did there, we come to realize that God has come for everyone. The law was not, a, was not abolished. It was fulfilled. And you now have the great gospel message to give to each and every one of your congregations. 
The Apostle Paul, initially one of the most reticent and resistant to change, who prayed probably every day, even as a Pharisee of Pharisees, I thank God that I am not a Gentile or slave or woman, ended up writing these revolutionary words under the inspiration of the Spirit. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Grace, grace found a way. Brothers, may it be that as you get up and you'll hear about your calls and you'll anticipate them along with your spouses or family, however it might be, may it be that you resolve to know nothing among your people except Jesus Christ and him crucified. It doesn't matter if we wear masks or not. There'll be other decisions. You'll re Please resolve. Please resolve to preach the crucified Christ. And may you never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world has been crucified to you and you to the world. We all want to say welcome to you. These are great men that want to support you, continue to pray with you, and encourage you. We want to say welcome to the front lines. God bless you. Thank you, President Meyer. We also have honored to have with us this evening uh, the Reverend Dr. Matthew Harrison, President of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. And President Harrison, I invite you to come and bring your greetings to the students this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom, for that wonderful sermon. And thank you, David. I was in a sheep paddock one time in South Australia, and. Uh, I was with the shepherd, the owner of the sheep, driving into that paddock. And as he was driving his utility truck with me in it, all of a sudden the sheep started to flee, thousand of them, probably 1,500. And all of a sudden he, Graham began to say, he was a Lutheran guy, he began to say, hey Bob, hey Bob, just about that loud, hey Bob. And within a couple of minutes, a thousand sheep surrounded that truck so thick you could step out, you felt like you could step off and walk across them. My sheep hear my voice, and you are Jesus' sheep. We're so thankful for you. We're so thankful for this seminary and its faculty. We're thankful for this moment in your life, and we're thankful for these people you've invited to see this event. I'm sure they are all your major donors over here. <laughs> You've learned something about fund development right off, the, right off the bat. We thank all of you for your investment in these men and your partnership with them, how exciting this will be. There's really not much left to say. Now you who are sheep yourselves are sent. And the powerful Lord blesses through his word the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, covenant, our Lord Jesus Christ, establish you by every good thing for the doing of his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, as you hear your name called and your placement announced, remember God's word in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ Jesus. The following candidates have been certified for the Office of the Holy Ministry and the Diaconate Ministry by the faculty of Concordia Seminary. I invite the first group of candidates to line up. Members of the faculty have also written special notes of encouragement for each of our candidates, which I will read along with the placement. And you're probably wondering, yes, it is now time for me to come down and actually do this.
Sean Baker, assistant pastor, Bethany Lutheran Church, Johnson County or Overland Park, Kansas, Kansas District. Dr. Schmidt has written, Sean, your genuine humility and sincere graciousness are a delight in your preaching. I pray that God blesses people through your words and work. Garrett Ricky Beckett, Associate Pastor, Zion Lutheran Church, Mount Pleasant, Michigan, Michigan District. Dr. Penhaligon, Ricky, I recall one day at Concordia Ann Arbor loaning you my pocket edition of the Book of Concord so that you could explore the confessions and Lutheranism for yourself. And here you are. May our Lord bless your subscription to these confessions as you serve his people in his church wherever he calls you to serve. Jake Bellinghausen, pastor, Grace Lutheran Church, Vestal, New York, Eastern District. Dr. Nasker writes, God has served you in Christ, Jake, and he sent you to serve others in his name. You have carried out your service in the dorms with integrity and joy. Now bring that same joyful service to this congregation and community. Matthew Berry, pastor, Concordia Lutheran Church, Sykeston, Missouri, Missouri District. Dr. Seifred writes, may the Lord bless you, Matt, and make you a blessing to those to whom he sends you. Preach the word in season and out of season for the joy and strengthening of the flock. Jess Bierman, Associate Pastor, Trinity Lutheran Ministries, Edwardsville, Illinois, Southern Illinois District. Dr. Okamoto writes, Jesus said to the disciples, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Now he has chosen you for special service. Go and bear fruit. Chad Bullison, pastor, Messiah Lutheran Church, Sterling, Illinois, Northern Illinois District. Dr. Thompson writes, Chad, a listening ear and a thoughtful reply are valuable for pastoral ministry and our gifts you possess. God bless you as you lead his people. Nathaniel Brown, pastor, Trinity, Grace, and Trinity Lutheran Churches, Odessa, Corral, and Walter Township, Minnesota, Minnesota North District. Dr. Burson writes, a master sacristan and house fellow, Nathaniel, you have learned the art of liturgia and now will render the ministry of Christ to supply the needs of the saints. Justin Cullen, pastor, Faith Lutheran Church, Sullivan, Illinois, Central Illinois District. Dr. Olowski writes, as you go out into the ministry, take the whole armor of God with you. Develop that spiritual muscle memory so that when the assaults come, you will not be overcome, but be able to stand firm in the faith and prevail. Christopher Deneen, Associate Pastor, Our Savior Lutheran Church, Lansing, Michigan, Michigan District. Dr. Thompson writes, Chris, God has gifted you with patience and compassion along with a strong sense of service and ministry. The Lord bless as you care for his people. George Denholm, pastor and church planter, Emmaus Lutheran Church, St. Louis, Missouri, Missouri District. Dr. Marriott writes, Jordy, we have shared many conversations over the commandments, 
May your ministry lead you and Kara to love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. This is the greatest commandment. Micah Drangler, associate pastor, Living Word Lutheran Church and School, the Woodlands, Texas, Texas District. Dr. Halp writes, your pastoral heart for fellow students in need, your gracious humility at your vicarage congregation, and your southern charm and humor <laughs> are gifts the Lord Jesus has given you for accomplishing his mission. Go boldly into that mission as the person Christ has shaped you to be. Matthew Dubinsky, pastor. St. Paul Lutheran Church, Chicago Heights, Illinois, Northern Illinois District. Dr. Mars writes, Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. It has been wonderful watching you grow in these attributes, readying yourself to serve God's people in Christ. Miguel Gonzalez Feliciano, pastor, King of Glory Lutheran Church, Elgin, Illinois, Northern Illinois District. Dr. Penhaligon writes, Miguel and Rachel, it was a joy to teach and interact with you both at Concordia University Ann Arbor. Now it is a joy to celebrate your first call. I look forward to seeing how our gracious Lord will bless your efforts together in his harvest fields, wherever those fields may be. Thank you. Daniel Gregg, pastor, the Lutheran Church of the Holy Spirit, Elk Grove Village, Illinois, English District. Dr. Peter writes, you have encouraged us to do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus. Colossians 3.17. May you now proclaim repentance for the forgiveness of sins in Jesus' name and by his power as you minister to his people. Brendan Harrell, associate pastor, Our Savior's Lutheran Church and School, Springfield, Illinois, Central Illinois District. Dr. Ba Rockenbach writes, Brendan, you have the qualities of a wise owl. You think... <laughs> I'm not quite sure how to react to your <laughs> classmate. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Rockenbach writes, you think deeply about many things so that you can find creative ways to collaborate and care for others. God bless your service in proclaiming the gospel of Christ. Aaron Hickey, associate pastor, Redeemer Lutheran Church, Peoria, Illinois, Central Illinois District. Dr. Bierman writes, your smile precedes you and your enthusiasm for the moment infects all those around you. Make both omnipresent in your ministry except, of course, when the law demands otherwise. <laughs> Joseph Hiley, pastor, First Lutheran Church and School, Ponca City, Oklahoma, Oklahoma District. Dr. Kolb writes, we will miss you and seek, Joseph, and we hope to see you soon on the other side of the continuing education experience. Blessings to you and Rachel as you venture into ministry. Zachary Huffman, Associate Pastor, Redeemer Lutheran Church, Seymour, Indiana, Indiana District. Dr. Rockenbach writes, Zach, your parrot characteristics of being enthusiastic, creative, and wanting to care for others will serve you well in ministry. God bless you and Jody as you faithfully proclaim God's word. Andrew Johnson, associate pastor, Shepherd of the Hills Lutheran Church, San Antonio, Texas, Texas District. Dr. Halp writes, 
Andy, your heart for the lost and your innovative leadership in our Lord's mission to the world flows from our Lutheran understanding of the power of the word as it goes out to all nations. Go out in that mission with the Lord's promise that his word will not return void, but will accomplish what he has given it to do. Quincy Call, pastor. Christ the Cornerstone and Mount Olive Lutheran Churches, San Diego and Poway, California, Pacific Southwest District. Dr. Olowski writes, Gregory the Great once said, <laughs> Pastors are servants of the servants of God. May you have the heart of a servant as you go out to serve the servants wherever he calls you. Joel Cosberg, assistant pastor, Emanuel Lutheran Church, Downers Grove, Illinois, Northern Illinois District. Dr. Nafsker writes, Joel, our Lord has given you the ability to lead with tenacity and humility. This has served you well on the court and in your studies, and it will help serve faithfully in your congregation. May God grant you and Becky strength and joy as you proclaim Jesus in word and deed. Joshua Laborious, pastor, Edgewater Lutheran Church, Eastvale, California, Pacific Southwest District. Dr. Thompson writes, Josh, your initiative and can-do attitude inspires. May the Spirit of God continue to grant you insight for enterprising leadership for the gospel. Matthew Lorenz, associate pastor, Zion Lutheran Church, Alexandria, Minnesota, Minnesota North District. Dr. Rutt writes, Matthew, it is a real blessing for me to see you come to this day when you receive your first call into the ministry. We go back a long ways, literally to the day you were born, when your family and ours served as missionaries to Guatemala. God will use you both, Matthew and Shannon, for the purposes of the kingdom. His peace, courage, and strength be with you. Ryan Mazur, pastor, First Lutheran Church, Plattsmouth, Nebraska, Nebraska District. Dr. Nasker writes, Ryan, the Lord has given you a pastoral and servant heart. It comes through in the garden, on the security truck, in class discussions, and on the court. May God grant you and carry joy in serving, hope and rejoicing, and confidence in proclaiming the promises of Jesus. Brendan Moore, associate pastor, Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church, Winter Haven, Florida, Florida, Georgia District. Dr. Rockenbach writes, Brendan, your mixed owl and dove qualities allow you to take a compassionate yet systematic approach in your care for others. God bless you and Jordan in your future ministry and always be confident in the work of Christ. Jacob Mueller, pastor, Epiphany Lutheran Church, Kenmore, Washington, Northwest District. Dr. Bierman writes, steady and certain and reserved. You know what you know, and you know it well. Now go and deliver what you know is God's truth to God's people with unflinching confidence. Andrew Mazel, associate pastor, Zion Lutheran Church, Mayor, Minnesota, Minnesota South District. Dr. Nafsker writes, the Lord has given you strength and confidence, Andrew. Put them to use as you proclaim the promises of Jesus. God has given you a faithful wife from a faithful family and a faithful congregation. Together with Anna, serve the people of God with the new life he has given you in Christ. Brian Novak, associate pastor and pastor. St. John's 
and St. John Lutheran Churches. Redbud and Baldwin, Illinois, Southern Illinois District. Uh, what's inside will explain that to you, Brian. <laughs> Dr. Peter writes, I have been encouraged to watch you run the race with perseverance. You certainly persevered to arrive at this day in which you receive your call. Now continue to persevere in ministry with your eyes fixed on Jesus, the founder and perfecter of faith. Benjamin Oschlager, pastor. Good Shepherd Lutheran Church and Preschool, Lake Orion, Michigan, Michigan District. Dr. Dose writes, Thanks, Ben, for all your support and wisdom. To quote from Paul to the Romans, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I myself am convinced, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge and competent to instruct one another. Christian Pieper, pastor, Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Turlock, California, California, Nevada, Hawaii District. Dr. Haup writes, Christian, your background in business and leadership paired with your thorough grounding in the scriptures and confessions during your time here at the seminary will be put to good use in our Lord's church. Lead in our Lord's mission with the same vigor and talent you showed on the basketball court. Go preachers. <laughs> Joseph Pearson, pastor, St. Paul Lutheran Church, Webster City, Iowa, Iowa District West. Dr. Schmidt writes, Joe, you are as comfortable in the church preaching and teaching as you are under the hood rebuilding an engine. <laughs> May your practical wisdom and holy dedication to God's varied works be gifts that you continue to share. Paul Remfer, Associate Pastor, St. John's Lutheran Church, Columbus, Nebraska, Nebraska District. Dr. Seleska writes, Paul, when your dad and I were classmates, I deeply admired the quiet strength that he exhibited no matter what was happening around him. I see that same beautiful quality in you. I know that your people will also see it, and they will grow to admire you and love you for it. May God bless you richly in your service to him. Aaron Razerberg, Associate Pastor, Elm Grove Lutheran Church, Elm Grove, Wisconsin, South Wisconsin District. Dr. Bierman writes, always ready to venture an answer and always ready to learn, work to instill that same eager spirit in those you are called to serve leading them more deeply into the wonders and wisdom of right teaching. Kyle Ronchetto, pastor, St. Paul Lutheran Church, Lexington, Illinois, Central Illinois District. Dr. Seleska writes, Kyle, over these last four years, I've seen how much you've grown into a man who is now totally ready to serve God's people. I'm so very proud of you and I'm thankful that God has graciously blessed you in your time at the seminary. I know that the people you are being called to serve will rejoice that God has given them such a wonderful pastor. Zachary Seralt, Associate Pastor, Resurrection Lutheran Church, Cary, North Carolina, Southeastern District. Dr. Thompson writes, Zach, you have great instincts for pastoral ministry. God will richly bless the ministry where you put them into practice for service to Christ. Ryan Schnacki, Associate Pastor, Concordia Lutheran Church, McCunji, Pennsylvania, SCLC District. Dr. Seleska writes, Ryan Schnacki, the man who cannot resist jacking up a three from deep in the corner, but who does it and everything else with such joyful exuberance that I could never get mad. In fact, you always manage to make me smile. I pray that you never lose that enthusiasm for your ministry 
and life into which God is calling you. Mm -hmm. Alexander Schrader, associate pastor, Emmanuel Lutheran Church, Olivet, Missouri, Missouri District. Dr. Marriott writes, as the best bass player I've ever heard or seen, you've been the solid foundation of many musical endeavors here at Concordia Seminary. Now you, Vicki, and your family will build a new ministry in a new place. May our Lord Jesus continue to be your firm foundation in ministry and in life. Corey Schaefer, pastor, Trinity Lutheran Church, Port Edwards, Wisconsin, North Wisconsin District. Dr. Shucker writes, gathering into the net, the disciples are then fed by Jesus, who last of all entrusts his disciples to the precious care of his sheep. May he who is our light and our life bless and keep you in this sacred charge till Jesus comes again. Bradley Singer, pastor, Peace in Christ Lutheran Church, Walkersville, Maryland, Southeastern District. Dr. Seleska, Brad, I, and especially my wife, will never forget your ceaseless chatter sitting behind us on our travels around Israel. <laughs> it has truly been a distinct honor to walk with you on your journey during this time of your life. I pray that you never lose your sense of humor nor your capacity to forgive and love those who seem to make doing that rather hard. Jacob Smith. Assistant Pastor, St. Paul Lutheran Church, Aberdeen, South Dakota, South Dakota District. Dr. Rockenbach writes, Jacob, you are patient, a good listener, and willing to care for anyone. Your dove qualities will serve you well in providing pastoral care. God bless you as you faithfully serve in his kingdom. Oh, just a little hint. Your senior pastor is sitting right over there. Okay. <laughs> Ian Thurmanson, associate pastor, Redeemer Lutheran Church, North Chesterfield, Richmond, Virginia, Southeastern District. Dr. Nasker writes, Ian, you have a way of getting to the heart of the matter and calling a thing like it is. As you proclaim the promise of Jesus' resurrection and the new life he gives us, find strength in God's call to make you his own. May the Lord grant you and Brittany joy in your service to his people. Jeffrey Tucker, Associate Pastor, Christ Church Lutheran, Phoenix, Arizona, Pacific Southwest District. Dr. Shuckard writes, Jesus declares, just as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. May our Lord bless you and keep you in this, your sacred charge, till Jesus comes again. Evan Veen, pastor, Holy Redeemer Lutheran Church, Dryden, Michigan, Michigan District. Dr. Olowski writes, your spiritual life is God's gift to you for the ministry. Tend to it each day by memorizing and focusing on one Bible verse for that day that you will pray and meditate on. And let the Spirit work through his word in you and through you. Mason Beeth, Associate Pastor, Trinity Lutheran Church, Elkhart, Indiana, Indiana District. Dr. Seifert writes, Our community with one another consists solely of what Christ has done for each of us. Bonhoeffer. May we continue to discover this truth together, Mason, and may God grant you true joy in serving the community to which he now calls you. Brandon Wittig, pastor, Trinity Lutheran Church, Sawyer, Michigan, Michigan District. Dr. Schmidt writes, Brandon, from the first time I met you at college until now, you have humbly shared with me God's work in your life. 
May God bless you as now you go to share God's gracious work with others in the world. Andrew Zobel, associate pastor, St. James Lutheran Church, Shawano, Wisconsin, North Wisconsin District. Dr. Marriott writes, your voice is a true and beautiful gift, one that you have shared across the world through your participation in Laudamus. Blessings to you, Kristen, and your family as our Lord calls you to use that voice to proclaim his gospel in this new ministry. We have one residential master divinity student who is currently serving a deferred vicarage, Andrew Simpson, pastor, our Savior Lutheran Church, Sparks, Nevada, in the California, Nevada, Hawaii district, and Dr. Mars writes, as your mentor, it has been a pleasure to observe your devotion as husband and father and to watch you grow in pastoral skills and most importantly in your faith in Jesus Christ. Blessings as you share Christ in your first call to the pastoral ministry. We have three residential deaconess candidates. If you were listening carefully, Amanda Berry's husband was placed at Concordia in Sykeston, and hopefully in a short period of time we will have a call for you to that congregation as well. But for now, it is simply placement pending, Amanda. Dr. Bierman writes for you, daughter, student, wife, mother, deaconess. God has tasked you with so many vital vocations. Honor your heritage and do all your vocations with God's grace, proving the truth that every vocation is better done when shaped by good theological training. Mm. Rachel Hiley, like Amanda, Joseph's right there, First Lutheran Church and School in Ponca City, and hopefully, hopefully in a short period of time there will be a call from that congregation, but for now it is placement pending. Dr. Burrison writes, No greater title, Rachel, than that given to Deaconess Phoebe, a servant of the church, Romans 16.1. May you continue in heart, mind, and action as you have shown to follow in her path. Rebecca Lucas, Communications Specialist, Concordia Seminary, St. Louis, Missouri, Missouri District. Dr. Okamoto writes, God in his mercy made you one of his own dear children and now is calling you for service. So do everything with joy and confidence and be merciful just as our Father is merciful. We have three students from the Cross Cultural Ministry Center who are receiving calls this evening. One of them is here to receive his call document in person. Brian Barlow, pastor, Resurrection Lutheran Church, Quartz Hill, California, Pacific Southwest District. Dr. Mars writes, the Lord has given you compassion for the broken and the gifts to build them up in their identity in Jesus Christ. May he continue to strengthen you to teach others of Christ's deep love for them. Our other two Cross-Cultural Ministry Center students are in absentia. Michael Schutzler, pastor, Cross Point Lutheran Church, El Paso, Texas, in the Rocky Mountain District. Dr. Nasker writes, in a sermon you compose for class, you proclaim the promise of the new creation in Christ. God has made you his new creation, and he sends you with joy and confidence to extend that new creation to your congregation and community. And Christopher Simmons, associate pastor, Grace Lutheran Church and School, Pocatello, Idaho, Northwest District. Dr. Sanchez writes, Dear Chris, what a privilege to have you have had you in class and to learn about your exciting ministry. Your entrepreneurial spirit and zeal for the gospel are gifts the Spirit will bless with many years to come. 
Rich blessings to you as you proclaim the cross in your community. We have seven residential alternate route students who are currently on vicarage in various parts of the country. They are all in abstentia. Justin Bangert, associate pastor, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church and School in Edmond, Oklahoma, Oklahoma District. Dr. Peter writes, your journey to this event of call day has led you through many experiences as you have sought to do God's will. I'm grateful that our paths crossed in that journey. Know that the Lord will continue to guide and strengthen you on the path ahead. Bruce Elliott, pastor, Emanuel Lutheran Church, Barnhart, Missouri, Missouri District. Dr. Kolb writes, Clay vessels we may be, Bruce, but the potter does marvelous work and he will continue to fashion you beautifully as his instrument for furthering his kingdom and nurturing his children. Eric Gradberg, associate pastor, our Savior Lutheran Church, Norfolk, Nebraska, Nebraska District. Dr. Marriott writes, God calls us to venture not see the ending. This has certainly been true in your journey into the ministry. May our Lord, who has guided your feet so faithfully to this point, lead you, Kim, and your family onward as you continue this new adventure. Brian Roshi, pastor, St. Matthew Lutheran Church, Westland, Michigan, Michigan District. Dr. Seifed writes, It was an absolute delight to be part of your preparation for pastoral ministry, Bryce. May the Lord strengthen and use you and the gifts that he obviously has given you. Be mindful yourself and your teaching. Preserve in these things, for doing so you will save both yourself and others. 1 Timothy 4.16 Nathan Spearbrecker, pastor, Chesapeake Community of Hope Lutheran Church, Chesapeake, Virginia, Southeastern District. Dr. Peter writes, You have exemplified what a messenger of joy looks like. Your joyful spirit and perpetual smile uplift me and all who know you. May you continue to share the joy of Jesus in pastoral ministry. Don Woolweber, pastor, Zion and, Bethlehem, Be Zion and Bethel Lutheran Churches, Picks, Pittsburgh and Glenshaw, Pennsylvania, Eastern District. Dr. Rutt writes, Congratulations, Don, on your call into the ministry. During your time on campus, I thoroughly enjoyed our lunchtime conversations on matters of theology and ministry. And who can ever forget that deep, resonant voice? <laughs> Sometimes it seemed like God himself was speaking to us. God bless you and Deborah in your service to Christ and his kingdom. And Andrew Rassman, pastor. Oak Road Lutheran Church, Lilburn, Georgia, Florida, Georgia District. Dr. Mars writes, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. Acts 4.12. May the Lord empower you to continue to share with others in your preaching, teaching, and writing that Jesus is our only way and truth. In abstentia, we have two students from the Center for Hispanic Studies receiving pastoral calls. Ed Eduardo Martinez, call pending to Hope Lutheran Church in Orlando, Florida, Florida, Georgia District. Dr. Sanchez writes, Dear Brother Eduardo, what a joy to celebrate with you and your family the completion of your formation as a pastor. The Lord has given you gifts of teaching and administration and a deep appreciation for the church's worship. Through your ministry, you will be a rich blessing to many. Congratulations. And Luis Martinez, call pending to Trinity Klein Lutheran Church, Spring, Texas, Texas District. Marcus Kemp writes, We are honored to know you and we celebrate your calling to serve Christ in his church. Blessings of joy in your ministry to others. We have two deaconesses from the Center from, for Hispanic Studies, also in abstentia. Nancy Estrada, deaconess, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School, Aurora, Illinois, Northern Illinois District. Dr. Sanchez writes, Dear Sister Nancy, congratulations on the completion of your formation as a deaconess. 
The Lord has given you gifts of teaching and spiritual care and a deep love for children and families. Through your ministry, you will be a rich blessing to many. We rejoice with you and your family on this special day. Maria Isabel, the Yegas Deaconess, St. Paul Lutheran Church and School, Aurora, Illinois, Northern Illinois District. Marcus Kemp writes, What a joy to know that Christ Church will have a deaconess with your gift of compassion. Blessings of joy in your service to others. We have two students from the Ethnic Immigrant Institute of Theology, also in absentia. Albert Picot, Assistant Pastor, Resurrection Lutheran Church, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, South Dakota District. Dr. Okamoto writes, Paul and Timothy told the Corinthian church, we are ambassadors of Christ, God making his appeal through us. And now you are an ambassador of Christ. Be confident and be faithful as God speaks and works through you. And Andrew Pettijohn, pastor, Christ Lutheran Church of the Death, Silver Spring, Maryland, Southeastern District. Jeff Thurmanson writes, Andrew, your passion for reaching the deaf community with the gospel is evident throughout your vicarage. May the Lord provide many future opportunities to share Jesus with those who cannot hear with ears, but who hear with their eyes through American Sign Language. Brothers and sisters, I encourage you with these words from Paul. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. President Egger, these are the Concordia Seminary's pastoral and deaconess candidates for spring 2021. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, the author of all wisdom, understanding, and true strength, we ask you to look mercifully upon your servants and send your Holy Spirit into their hearts that when they must join to fight in the field for the glory of your holy name, then they, being strengthened with the defense of your right hand, may stand in the confession of your faith and of your truth and continue in the same unto the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh Lord, you have power over death and the grave and have shown us your wonderful grace in rescuing us from sin. We thank you for the blessings in the past 182 years that you have bestowed on Concordia Seminary. And we thank you for the work you have given us to do together in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. We ask you to give us grace to persevere in our present work so that your honor and glory are magnified everywhere. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray.
you stand? May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.